Hey everybody, welcome to this video where today we're at Aburi Sushi. A-B-U-R-I, I think that's how it's pronounced. And while there are many locations around the Los Angeles area, we are at the Long Beach location. As you can see, me and Blaine repping that Long Beach attire. Here with not only, again, Mr. Blaine, Miss Reyna, but also uh, my new acquaintance and friend, Edder. Uh, who is not in the video at the moment, but he might make a bit of an appearance later. So we came to do their all you can eat. So this was a very interesting all you can eat. So I will say that it was in fact actually like an all you can eat I've never seen before. Pretty much all the items on the menu, including the sashimi, the uh, and especially the maki rolls were all like very, very fancy and done up. This is especially interesting, as you note, know, with the sashimi, and you will kind of see as it going. So, these are the sashimi plates. Um, right there, I ate a bit of a salmon one. Uh, here, you're going to see it with the tuna. This is a um, seared red tuna, which was all very, very delicious. But interestingly, like you just couldn't order like a straight, plain salmon sashimi or a straight plain tuna sashimi all of them were like seared and sauced as you can kind of see all the plates there in front of mr blaine you can see all the plates that i've had so far all of them are basically like seared sauced they're kind of i'll use the term done up so it was very interesting as i said um i've never been to a all you can eat place which literally all the dishes were done up same kind of goes for the maki rolls whereas like if i wanted to just order like a plain salmon roll I don't even like there was basically no options for the kind of plain rolls it was basically all just like fancy items which was an, you know just an interesting aspect it wasn't bad but it really also encouraged us to try a lot of new and different items and i will say everything was phenomenal the tastes on the items were great i really loved the sashimis as you saw we already went through a big number of plates here we have um, i believe this one's called a vegas roll the Vegas rolls, we had some really cool California rolls. We had a number of different dragon rolls, both black dragon rolls, normal red dragon rolls. And again, everything was just very fancy. Uh, that was the uh, red dragon roll right there in front of me. So, you know, we're often looking at, you know, a, a, a fish within them. And then you're having the fish on top, the avocado, the really nice additions. Everything also looked exceptional. The portions of fish on the nigiri and or just sushi pieces as you can see in front of me yes i know a lot of people call them nigiri that's the proper term but most places in north america also just classify them as straight sushis um, they were also really really good the portions were great the lunch price was 25 bucks the dinner price was 29 dollars so not a huge difference in that and they actually did offer the same menu at both lunch time and dinner time the only difference was the cutoff time so you were getting a lot of the higher price quality items available to you such as the red tuna which is generally more expensive um, at lunch time as well as dinner time as i said really nice fish portions on the nigiri as you saw on the salmon you can see on the tuna the fish was literally like tailing off of it uh, which was nice. I like that. I'm a big tuna. I'm a big salmon person. Those are my two favorite uh, types of fish generally when I go to sushi. I also very much enjoy having the large variety and having all these different fancy rolls. Um, again, really ate it for a really nice experience as we got to try many, many items I just normally would not try. There was a very interesting order system, whereas, so there were f um, four of us at the table. And you can only order five dishes per person per round or like per time you order. So if to, to make sense of this, we could order a total of 20 plates at a time. If you ordered the maki rolls, you know, that could be six to eight pieces times 20. However, if you ordered the normal nigiri or sushi pieces, which came in portions of two, you could only order two times 20, if that makes sense. So essentially we could order 20 dishes at a time per round and that's what we did. This was a absolutely lovely roll. I forget what it was called, but it was a baked hot roll um, in the cast skillet there. It had little scallops on it. It had a number of sauces. It was really, really warm. It was very, very rich. 
but everybody absolutely loved the flavor of it. We ordered many, many of those, and any items that we found to be our favorite, we ordered many rounds. What else I really liked about this Abori place is not only were the rolls of very high quality and very, very delicious, but all of their, I'll call them more like appetizers, were also very delicious. And you could really tell that they were quality. So we had some calamari and or kind of squid, fried squid, squid tentacles there in front of me. They were really delicious, well done, came with a really nice sauce. This item I'm eating now is kind of similar to what I've been often seen called a sushi pizza where it is a deep fried rice patty it has fish on top this one had some avocado as well as some sauces so again like i said a lot of these dishes especially the sushi dishes being very well done up very fancy not overly minimalistic we had um, some lovely uh well i didn't have too much of it but there's like udon bowls um we had some uh, squid uh, as mentioned, squid tentacles, we also had some octopus balls there on the bottom left. Those are not for me, I've had them before. Um, a little fishier for my taste, but the squid are really good. We had some edamame, of course. The orderings, also some spring rolls, and kind of a different variety of, of items. I am more stick to the sushi and or the meat items, but I tried all of these items as they said I would enjoy them. And like I said, everything was of a high quality. They had a really nice array of different side dishes, and even though, again, I come usually for the sushi at the All You Can Eat, these were very pleasant and enjoyable items. So Reina doesn't like raw fish, so she really did not eat any of the fish sushis. She really only enjoyed the items which had, were cooked. Um, so there were a number there. That was, again, something kind of like a California roll. I forget the exact name of it, but it had the crab on the inside. It had some... Uh, tuna and or salmon on top and a spicy sauce which again just really really great flavors i also had some more of the uh, nigiri both of the tuna both of the salmon we definitely ordered some more of the sashimis and this is where we really started to identify the rolls that we liked so we were ordering multiple of the rolls i had in front of me and that blaine's eating there we're eating the same kind of roll and we also really like these black dragon rolls. In fact, for our next order, we decided to order 11 of them all at once. So let's just say we had a large, large number of those, um, but everything was still very new and we were all still very much enjoying the flavors of everything at this time. Again, very impressed by the freshness, by the absolute quality of these items. And it really did allow us to try some unique items. This, uh, some of these rolls coming up, is one of the most interesting, unique rolls I've ever had. So they called this roll right here a sashimi roll, and they said it was wrapped in what they called a silk paper. It was my first time having a roll wrapped in a silk paper, and you can tell by the expression on my face. I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? And Reina even tried um, this, even though it had raw fish in it, and even she was like, whoa, what? like and in the best possible way so this silk roll we were it was like creamy so it had the fish on the inside of course avocado but also gave this really really unique creamy aspect it was almost like it was wrapped in i don't know like solidified cream it was very unique but i really really enjoyed it as well as all these other kind of fancy rolls we were trying again really a good experience to try a whole bunch of unique different rolls, expand the flavor palettes, and really get to decide what we liked. But I definitely liked this one, and it was one we were definitely going to order again. This particular roll, while I don't remember the exact name of it, it had asparagus in it. So it had asparagus, and then uh, the salmon on top, and it was a very unique flavor. So generally I find asparagus in different rolls or in sushi when I've ever had it before, I find it's a very strong, maybe almost overpowering flavor. However, whatever they kind of had in with it, which was kind of like the uh, crab, um, but they also had another flavor in there. And it really actually helped kind of balance and it didn't, let's say, uh, go against the taste of the asparagus. So it was a pretty simple roll, but the flavor combination really helped for the asparagus to not be overpowering, which again, I find with asparagus is a very, very important um, thing to do. 
going on to more of some of those uh, sashimi pieces, which came in orders of about five. This one was called the um, spicy tuna. So it was a white tuna, which was kind of almost in a marinade. That's what I shared with Blaine and Edder there. Um, and then of course, just hitting off these good old pieces of tuna, which very, very liked and very much enjoyed. There was definitely sometimes a bit of a wait between orders. So I understand, again, obviously some items take longer to create. And so yes, the orders would come out in stages or bits and pieces at a time, which was totally fine. I find that's very, very standard. But there definitely were some periods of time where we pretty much finished everything. We'd have our orders in, you know, very early. And we still would kind of have to wait. That being said, I mean, it, it was hit and miss. There were sometimes we waited a lot, sometimes we didn't wait as a lot, but it was a little wait. So one of the few times I actually got like a basic roll was this one here. It was a spicy tuna roll. So it was basically the uh, tuna roll, uh, or like a tuna, which was chopped up finely and mixed with what I would call more like a sriracha. So that was kind of what they used um, to style their kind of spicy rolls versus again using like a spicy mayonnaise. And when I say it was kind of like a sriracha, it wasn't actually sriracha, but it was some kind of a red roll. We had some uh, soft shell crab rolls there, um, which were kind of like a deep fried roll, um, which I was giving to Reina now. Whereas I'm taking the more pieces and sushis with the raw items and giving those to us. Uh, we had some more of those kind of uh, asparagus rolls, very much had these, again, I believe they're called a Vegas roll, which is what I gave towards Blaine. And at this point, we're kind of just cleaning up. It was a lot of sushi so far, and we knew we had a lot more to come. As I said, we started getting a little, well, I started to get a little crazier, I'll say, with the orders, very much enjoying it, enjoying the large flavors. But because, like, I think, because, again, as I mentioned, all these rolls were so done up, they had so much, like, so many spices, so many sauces, everything just was very, very rich. So I found, and I believe we all kind of found, we were starting to maybe feel the heavy heaviness of these sushi rolls a lot sooner than we normally would have if it was kind of the more traditional, I'm gonna say basic plain rolls that I have often have at other all-you-can-eats. However, again, the funny thing is that we knew what was coming. Like I said, we had a big order coming, and so it was just kind of bracing ourselves and ensuring that we were ready for some more food. We did get to try pretty much all of the different sushi rolls um, like during our visit. In fact, I think we probably did try every single one because as I said, although there was a bit of diversity in the menu, they're really like it was kind of, again, without just some more kind of basic rolls, which we were more familiar with. And so it actually kind of made the menu a little smaller, whereas normally a place would have like all their fancier rolls and then have the more basic rolls. Whereas pretty much when there's only just the basic rolls on the menu, or sorry, if there's only just the fancy rolls on the menu, that's pretty much, you know, cuts out a little bit of, well, the menu. That being said, again, everything was good. Again, there's this roll, I totally slipped in my mind, but it was probably Blaine's and maybe even Reina's favorite or Ader's favorite, which was super good. This roll was super rich, again, just covered in like rich sauces and oils. I believe there was maybe even like some kind of nuts on top, like peanuts maybe, but again, definitely little baby scallops. Again, it was a baked one, which I generally, I think more enjoy the raw sushis. I find they are a little lighter. I find they sit better in my stomach. And I find often you don't really need, at least I don't need, like a rich, rich item. Like when I'm going for sushi, I enjoy that it's quite light. I add my own flavors and dynamic to it with the wasabi, with the soy sauce. You know, sometimes having the additional richness and flavors like on these rolls, it is really, really nice, but generally I'd have them in kind of a bit of a smaller portion, I would say. Whereas again, basically all of these rolls were very fancy, very saucy, and well, ultimately they were very delicious, but a little heavier, that is for sure. Everybody was very much enjoying some more of these uh, side dishes, so we got some more of the side dishes. 
Blaine in front of him got some uh, deep fried crab, or again, it might have been classified as soft shell crab, but crab nonetheless. Um, we had some of their fried chicken. So they had this little, I don't know if, if it's a certain style of fried chicken, I was, if it's Korean or Japanese. Um, and yes, I, it kind of, I believe it was like a pan Asian something. We'll say it was Japanese, but Reina, I think, made some references to pan Asian cuisine. So uh, really, really nice with the chickens, very crispy, very crunchy, really nice batter on them, not overly flavored, like a lighter flavor seasoning, but they came with this really nice kind of more of what I would call a spicy mayonnaise sauce, which was very delectable, and I very much enjoyed it. It was something we had a couple orders of, and the deep fried crab that we had, uh, I did try a little bit of it, and again, Blaine ordered. It was interesting. It was well, the odd thing was is we had one piece, which, like from the same order, tasted really like fishier, and the other piece didn't taste fishy-ish, if that makes sense. Like it was a lot lighter flavor. So I'm gonna try it here. Um, and again, it was weird to have like one piece being ex like very very fishy and one piece not very fishy. Uh, and again, I'm not sure if it was just the cut or the different pieces or whatever, but. I was like, Blaine, you can have it, and ultimately he was like, yeah, that does taste different than the piece I just had. So I went back to that good old fried chicken, because who doesn't like fried chicken of all varieties and all ethnicities? Well, I'll make a long story short, I very much like fried chicken. So now the fun starts with all our dragon rolls, in fact, our black dragon rolls, which I ordered 11 of in this order. Um, which we really really liked what's nice about the black dragon rolls is it has the barbecued eel on it so it has the eel sauce which is very sweet kind of like a barbecue sauce it's very very rich but it's not rich in a sense that it like is deep fried but you have the avocado you have the eel you have that sweetness so it's rich but it's not overly heavy that I find a deep fried roll is heavier so it was kind of a, again it's a really nice pairing something that I really like and enjoyed and we enjoyed the first couple we had so much that I ordered 11 and maybe it was just a few too many but nonetheless we got to like you know you like it you go big go home and that was the great thing about doing the all you can eat we got to order kind of what we wanted um, again we did only have the limitations of ordering up to 20 dishes at a time but we were able to order, you know, again, throughout our different rounds, what we wanted as much as we wanted. Coming on here, again, in addition to the black dragon rolls, which you can see on the left of the screen there, between me and Reina, I got some more uh, sashimis as well. So I was going with the spicy tuna sashimi. Again, it was a white tuna in kind of a, I call it almost like a spicy marinade. They always had like chives or green onions on top. They had um, some kind of cooked white onions as well, which just kind of added again this uh, nice, very flavorful palate, but again, very strongly flavored. So I would even go as far to say that if you like the basic sushis and basic sashimis, with the exception of the, the, the nigiri, you probably would not overly enjoy this place. Just because I said everything is so done up. Everything is so... I don't want to say like fancy, but everything is just so flavored, um, so, many, so many sauces, uh, etc. Um, we did order some more of the uh, calamari, the tentacles, because we all really liked that. Um, we got another, uh, Edder got an order of like the chicken udon, and I believe we got some other side dish there. Um, I'm not sure which one. Uh, oh, well, there we go. We got the. Uh, Rana got some more ta takiyaki or whatever it's called, the octopus balls. Again, I was just starting to go through and try to get rid of some of these uh, black dragon rolls, which at the time when I ordered them, sounded like a great idea. But as you know, it took I like a very, 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 very long time to get these. And yes, no, I understand that, yeah, it's a restaurant, and sure, the, sh the sushi chef stuff got to make these rolls, but I would say it was probably about 40 or 50 minutes between the time that we actually put in the order for these dragon rolls and then by the time we got them. So I'll leave that up to you to decide whether that's a reasonable time or not. But by the time we got them, um, let's just say we weren't enjoying them as much because we had some other items in between. But again, everything was great. We had no issues overall with the flavors of anything. Um, again, the quality of all these items was very uh, exceptional. It was very enjoyable. 
there, I don't recall one item actually that it seemed that it was uh, off tasting or it was low quality. Everything was good and it was definitely somewhere that I would come again. Uh, what's really cool, so they had this other dish. It was, I forget, I forget the name, but it was almost like a Mexican roll, which was very interesting. Um, you're gonna see it come here in one second, which we actually thought it, thought it had hot Cheetos on it. We were just kind of going by the picture, which it was not, but it was just red dyed uh, tempura. But again, it was kind of unique to have an almost Mexican flavored sushi roll or Mexican inspired um, flavored sushi roll. As it kind of carried some of the, well, I'll say flavors you would expect if you're gonna have a Mexican flavored item. And this one, again, it pretty much just had kind of the crab in it, the uh, shredded kind of, you know, typical sushi crab that you find inside a lot of California rolls and. Uh, inside a lot of the dragon rolls but it of course had this like Mexican seasoning so I mean it was unique like it really was Mexican flavored sushi roll and it looked the part too it really reminds me of that uh, kind of Mexican street corn it has you know often kind of that red crumbled color on it and again we originally thought it had hot Cheetos on it Despite us, we're, we were definitely filling up. Uh, the rolls just kept coming and coming um, because we ordered them. But however, this was the last roll or last order of rolls we put in. So we had 20 more plates coming. Um, so as you see, some of the items we got there, we got another uh, couple of those fancy rolls, some deep fried items on them. On the right there, between me and Blaine, we got a, well, I should say I got a number of just normal nigiri and or normal sushi pieces well you can see the uh, tunas there we got some more uh, dragon rolls which i just pulled on to scream rain at this point was pretty much uh done blaine was very much done as well we were all pretty much done but as it is not all you can eat this style and variety is you pay for what you don't eat so it's all you can eat and it's all the one price as long as you do not you know, have any extra because you have to pay for your extra at regular price. So of course we were going to leave no extra and we had no intentions of leaving any sort of extra today. So now I'll take the opportunity to kind of talk about the overall, I'll say kind of uh, value of this place. Um, I've talked quite a bit about the quality and the quality, you know, again, was very, very good. Uh, so the lunch was sitting at $25 where at the dinner was only $29. So I found that the $25 lunch price, even though yes, we definitely got our money's worth, and uh, you know, I found it was a little higher than a lot of the other all you can eat sushis I pay for at lunch. I find more standard that lunch price is around $20. I have seen it as low as 15, and this 25 was actually the highest I've ever paid for a lunch. Um, the second highest I've ever paid was about 23 for lunch, whereas dinner is usually at least $30, and I've paid upwards of, I think, about $35 for supper time. However, I do think that the $25 lunch fee is a little bit on the higher end for lunch, but still very reasonable. And whether that $25 price speaks to the marketing or when they're the busiest or slowest, um, I can also go as far as to say that the lunch, uh, so, sorry, the dinner price at $29, again, was often a lot lower than I've seen. Many, many times I paid $31, $32, I think that kind of about $30, probably $32 for a dinner is pretty standard in my opinion, about $30, $32. So it was actually a little cheaper than what I consider normal at supper time and a little bit more than what I would consider normal at lunchtime. Um, here we got some uh, ice creams. There was vanilla and there was a green tea, which the interesting thing is the ice creams actually were not on the little menu that we were given, which I showed you at the beginning. We had to actually ask for them. So that was, you know, I mean, nothing wrong with it, but if we didn't ask or mention it, we wouldn't have seen the ice cream. 
So that, that I do have to also open up and say perhaps there were other certain items that you could only get if you asked for them rather than if it was appearing on the menu. Again, overall, very nice experience. Would recommend this spot. I would definitely go back, but I hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. I'll show you our overall bill, what we got here momentarily, and uh, that, thanks for watching. Oh.